Welcome to Sex Ed with DB. I'm your host, DB. Let's get into it. Welcome back to the podcast. If you love and support the work that we do, head to www.sexedwithdb.com and buy some of our hot new merch. Follow us on Instagram at sexedwithdb podcast. And if you want to advertise with us, shoot us an email at sexedwithdb at gmail.com. Today, I get to hear from the lovely M. Ellery, author of A Color Named Love, the first children's book with polyamorous parents represented. As traditional publishers wouldn't want to help her with it, M. Ellery took a leap and did a crowdfunding campaign on Kickstarter, and it was a success. 600 parents and 177% of the goal reached, all because of an amazing community that supports and respects non-traditional forms of love. Learn more about the book at www.acolornamedlove.squarespace.com. Here I am with M. Ellery. Fun fact number one, did you know that Uberlube works underwater, making it great for fun in pools, lakes, and tubs? Fun fact number two, Uberlube is latex compatible, so it's safe and effective to use with condoms. And fun fact number three, a small amount of Uberlube can be applied anywhere to prevent daily chafing, not just when exercising. These fun facts are brought to you by Uberlube. Use promo code SEXEDDB for 10% off your purchase with free shipping at www.uberlube.com. Ever wish you had an exact replica of your gorgeous parts? Well, now you can make one yourself, thanks to Clonawilly. Clonawilly and Clonapussy are DIY molding kits that allow anyone to make an exact replica of any penis or vulva at home into a high quality sex toy or memento. Use promo code SEXED20 for 20% off your purchase at www.clonawilly.com. Follow them on Instagram at clonawillykit. Hello, M. Ellery. Welcome to the podcast. How are you? I'm good, Danielle. Thank you so, so much for having me here. I'm so excited to be talking with you, oh uh, especially the <laughs> Sex Ed podcast, because I really love your guys' content. I think it's really important what you're doing. So thank you for having me. Oh, thank you so much. That's so sweet. Well, you reached out to us a couple months ago on Instagram, and I was just so intrigued by your message and your content and your book. And I'm just so excited to have you on as well. So thank you so much for making the time. And <laughs> thank you. let's get started by you sharing your name, your pronouns and what you do. Yeah, so I'm M. Ellery. Uh, I go by she, her, and I'm a former marketing manager. I worked with marketing for almost 10 years. And last year during the pandemic, I decided I was going to leave that behind. And I really wanted to write a book, uh, especially uh, about non-monogamy and polyamory and focus on children. So that's why I decided to quit my job and focus on this writing career. Amazing. And where are you from? I'm from Brazil originally, and I moved to New York uh, two years ago with my husband. Awesome. Very cool. And uh, this is a question that we've kind of been asking recently, but we want to make it more a part of our episodes. But what was sex ed for you like growing up? That's really interesting. I've even written a little, uh, I've even written some text about it on my Medium page because it it was there was no sex ed for me as a kid. It's not something that my mom would talk about. It's it's not something that she would hide from me. But I really remember when I was young, my grandma covering my eyes doing movies when people were kissing or when they were making out when there was when there was sex happening. So I almost felt that sex was a little bit of shame mm-hmm. uh, and like this eye covering and all this whispering and I can see and I can look and I think it created a little bit of shame of my body of myself and this is really something that I not I don't want to do with my kids because I think there's so much shame surrounding the, su- the subject so much secrecy and I remember finding out on my own when watching movies of some girls kissing and I felt something different and I was like, what is this feeling? And then I tried to understand with my friends, but they don't know a lot. We were like 13. Mm -hmm. So it was something that I had to figure out on my own. My mom was never, if I asked her, she would tell me, but as I was so embarrassed to ask, 
it was something that never really, really happened. Totally. Yeah, I think a lot of people share that same sentiment of the, the feelings of embarrassment and shame and just like not being worthy of information or not, you know, you know, your feelings being invalid or what have you. So definitely you're not alone. Thank you for sharing <laughs> that. And what's your background? How did you become a writer? You said that you worked in marketing before and you kind of quit your job to achieve your dream of writing this book. But how did you gain the skills of becoming a writer? So since I was very, very small, I always loved to read. I think most of writers start as readers. So I started reading a lot. I loved books. My mom and my dad split up when I was very young. I was four. And my mom gave me a book called Two of Everything, where this girl and her brother, their parents had an unwedding. They split up. And they were very happy because they had two cakes, two houses, two dogs, two everything. And I was like, this book really helped me understand my situation. I could see through those kids my life through their eyes. And I was... uh, it was kind of a comfort reading a book. So I always like to read and write. So I wrote letters, wrote letters to people I love, to my mom, my aunt, started with my family, then my friends. I always love to express myself in writing. And last year in my mother's birthday, I wrote her a poem for her birthday and a poem for my grandma. And when I finished writing the poem, I wrote them super fast. And, and my husband was like, Mariana, you have to write. Like, I don't know why you're not writing still. And, and, and the poem was kind of that click for me, uh, that click moment. So it, it has been in my life for a long time. That's beautiful. I love that. Do you still write poems now? Yes, I write them. I write them eventually. If, if I, I, I feel more of the poems. Like something comes to me and I just want to write it really, really quickly so I don't lose. But yeah, I still write them. I love that. I love that so much. I feel like in high school, I really um, started getting into the poems of E.E. E. Cummings. I just really mm-hmm. appreciated like how beautiful it looked and like the pauses and each word on a different line and part of the page. And that that is really beautiful. I feel like I should read more poetry. I don't read enough poetry <laughs> these days. Yeah, I don't I don't know if it's something it's not very common because poetry sometimes is hard. Uh, it's a lot of concepts in, in a few words, mm-hmm. but it can be very deep and personal when you read a poetry and you identify with it. So yeah, you should read more. <laughs> I should. You're right. Okay. So let's, let's talk about your book. It's called A Color Named Love, which is a very, very cute title also. And so this is marketed as the first children's book with polyamorous parents represented. So I, I love that tagline because I think it immediately tells the the reader kind of like where the book is at and what it's offering. So I really, really like that and appreciate that. Mm -hmm. And so tell me a little bit more about the book, about what it's about and what really inspired you to write it. So I've been non-monogamous for almost three years now. So me and my husband, we started dating. We were discovering ourselves we didn't know what we were what we liked and then we start figuring out and when we got married we we understood we were non-monogamous so we we hooked up with other people we like to stay with other people but we always uh hooked up with friends so there was always a lot of love involved so there was a little bit of this polyamory in the air of feeling love for people we hooked up and feeling love for each other and when moving to New York, we, we met a couple of friends here. They were also non-monogamous. We started figuring out a lot about ourselves, reading more, because it was so new to, to all of us. So we started mm-hmm. reading more, trying to understand. And having kids was something that me and Rob, my husband, we always uh, thought about. And it's something that we wanted to have kids this year. We still don't know because of the pandemic, but right. it was a plan. <laughs> and when talking with our friends last year, we were like, a lot of them are non-monogamous in Brazil. And they have kids. And one of one of Kwepo has a kid of five years old. And we were talking to them about how was that feeling, uh, what did they thought, how they would talk to their kids. And they were like, yeah, we have no resources. We are scared because our kid is going to school. He's going to ask questions. We don't know what to say. And it's tough. And I thought, okay, let me find a book because I remember my childhood books helped me so much. So right. let me find a book to try to understand uh what a child can feel and see through her eyes. There were none. There were no books. There were books that, like, there's a book called uh, Six Cat Seed about a cat that has six owners. And 
people talk that those books kind of permeate the subject of uh, non-monogamy, but it's not direct, it's not clear, and it's not, uh, it, it didn't p- pass the message I wanted to tell my kids. Mm-hmm. So I thought, I have to create a book. <laughs> I want to write it and I want to tell that story. Mm-hmm. Yes. And can you tell a little bit about the story about like, without giving it too much away, but I read the manuscript and absolutely loved it. So I want people who are listening now to hear what it's about and, and the, you know, the characters and, and all that. Yeah. So it was very exciting to write that book. I did a lot of research before I, I looked at works that Dr. Elizabeth Chef and people who had been researching about kids and, and polyamory. It's a book about love, about a little girl called Anna and her four parents. So she's born out of the love of her mother and her father. And then it comes um, to other people in her life, her new mama and dada. And she lives with the love of these four people. And I wrote it a a focus in love because I think that's the only language that kids and adults understand. And they understand it no matter what. So it's a story about this girl and her figuring out what is this love that she feels for these four people and what is this love they feel for her. So she lives in a place called Loveville. (laughs) And there's a lot of relationship between music and love. So she's born of the symphony of the love of these parents and and the love that they feel contaminates people around them and, and colors her world. And there's a lot of questions that she does as a kid about what is love and what is family and why she lives in this environment and there's a part that i like in the book that for me is very important because as my parents split up when anna asks what happens when love leaves like what happens when Mm. there's no love or if someone leaves because in our life people leave friends leave they move parents leave some pass away and it's so important for kids to understand that this living what it means, what it means for someone when they leave. And in the book, I really like the part when when she heard, she hears from one of her parents saying, love doesn't win when someone says goodbye. It just goes to paint its colors somewhere nearby. So it just spreads out. It's The love is leaving your house to love someone else, but the love that you have and that they felt for you is still with you. Mm. So that's one of the, the key messages of the book. <laughs> that's very sweet. Yeah, I think that... Speaking about loss, I think it's really tough to broach those subjects with kids just because adults have trouble coping with loss and with grief Mm. and with letting go. And um, of course, that's like the major trope, right? Like I'm also a a product of divorce. My parents divorced when I was five, so very similar age to you. Mm -hmm. And I think there is this idea of like, oh, like I caused this or I, you know, am the reason why you split up. And I just think that if in school kids learned and at home kids learned that there are so many different types of families and that there are so many ways to receive support and love from one parent, multiple parents, grandparents, guardians, like whoever is around them, um, that would make the world so much better. (laughs) Like it would make it much more realistic and In the U.S., at least, like 50% of marriages end in divorce, right? And there's so much pressure on monogamy. And I just think that pressure should not be there. Totally, totally. I think that uh, us as adults have so much difficulty with loss and with uh, not understanding why someone left us, especially in monogamy. He's going to break up with me. He doesn't love me. What's going on? And, And if you lose someone as well, that we have a hard time explaining that to kids because we have a hard time understanding that for us as well. So I think what I wanted to portray in the book was this feeling that you do not need to be worried. It's not your fault that someone leaves. And and just because they left, that doesn't mean that everything that you live together isn't within you. Like you have that, you felt that uh, you change. Every relationship you change in a different way. And and that stays with you. So that's what I wanted to, to pass in the book because even in monogamy, when parents split up or when you're non-monogamous and there's a lot of partners, different people coming around and kids need to be able to navigate that in a way that they feel calm, respected, loved, and and, and uh, cur- have the courage to move on. Mm-hmm. Totally. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I love the, I love the story. Um, mm-hmm. And I, when it's out, because right now it's on pre-sale, right? Yes. Okay. And when's the release date? 
So we have the release date set up for March and uh, hopefully we're going to have them printed until March. I'm waiting to hear for the printer because they take a little bit long. Gotcha. Uh, probably if it doesn't come out in March, early April. That's amazing. And let's talk a little bit about the reception of the book, because I know while it's still in pre-sale, there was a lot of response that you all received on the Kickstarter. And can you and I went through the Kickstarter yesterday. And first of all, it really helps, I think, that there's so many beautiful like images and your illustrator did such a fantastic job. And I'm curious to hear what people's kind of responses have been mm -hmm. to the, the concept of the book and to the idea of sharing this with their kids. It has been very, very emotional in a very positive way because it's it's incredible to see the positive response of everyone, like all the families and parents writing to me, writing on Instagram saying how much they need this book to talk to their kids or how much they love to see their families represented in a book. And I even got a message from someone saying that I'm going to send this book to my mom. She's going to see that I'm not crazy, that I'm not the only one. So it, it's uh, this book has been a conversation starter for for parents and, and for kids and for parents or parents, because there's not only your kid, but your family, mm -hmm. people around you, your friends that maybe don't understand uh, your your choices. So when I think it's really comforting for people to see. And I can put myself in that shoe because for me, it's really comforting to be able to have this, to see and talk about non-monogamy in such a simple way and in mm -hmm. such a pure way because the way media portrays um, non-monogamy today or polyamory, it's all about sex and all about this um, obscure environment, which is not the case at all. Like right. there's so much lessons to be learned when you open yourself to love more people and you open yourself to, to conversations that this should be portrayed. This, this kind of, of, of love should be portrayed. So the response has been amazing and I can't wait for the book to come out and receive pictures of people with their kids and them telling like how they felt because I can't wait for them to hold the book in their hands. Oh, so sweet. Yeah, that's going to be very special and really will be such a teaching moment also, like you said, not only for kids, but for family members. And it, it makes me think of, I can't remember the title right now but have you heard of this children's book about that's like these crayola crayons essentially where they were born with a certain color but they feel like they're a different color and it's kind of about like being non-binary and trans and it's all about playing with the the gender spectrum i'll find i'll find the name um and and share it with you just share because, it, please yeah it, it just feels like also such an opportunity there. there. There are so many ways to talk to kids about these subjects. And I just think the way that you have written your book and framed it in this, in this framework of love and relationships and really paying attention to the fact that, yeah, you know, people do come and go, but like here are these, you know, a family of five, four parents and one kid, and she has all the love in the world. And I think that's very special. Yeah. And uh, I've got, um, I think once I got a message from someone asking, uh, I, commenting on Facebook, I don't want to talk with my kids about sex when, uh, when they saw about the book. And I wrote saying, this book is not at all about sex because I'm not the one who is going to tell you how to talk to your kids about sex. It's very particular. And each parent has their own way to, to discuss. And like you said, navigate sex education with their kids. I think it should be spoken, of course, but each parent has their own way. What I want is just to talk about love and talk about this relationship and how different forms of family can coexist no matter what. And for children to see not only their families, but even children who have monogamous families, children who have one mother, children who live with their grandparents, it doesn't matter. When they see a, ch a kid in a book that has a different family, they will identify. Mm -hmm. Or if they don't identify, they will learn to respect. So that is the key uh, message I want to give with this book. Amazing. And the next thing I want to ask you is if you did have one major message about polyamory and about non-monogamy speaking from your own experience as someone who does want to become a parent 
what do you want to share with other parents out there or future parents who hope to be able to pursue non-monogamy and polyamory and who also want to have kids? What's the message that you would would share with them as someone with your experience, not only being someone as part of a non-monogamous couple or group, but also someone who has written a children's book about this? I think my main message would be be very open and honest with yourself, with your partners, and with your kids. Because I'm not a mother yet, but in my open relationship, I've learned that talking is very important. And everything I feel or every concern I have, every little change of my inner energy, I get my husband, we get our partners, people who were were with at that time, and we talk about it and we try to solve it or we try to understand it and we give space to each other to marinate and understand but we always talk and I think kids ask things I was a very curious kid and you cannot lie to a children they understand so if you are non monogamous or if you are monogamous or if you want to split up or if whatever you want be very honest to your children because this will enable and allow them to be honest with themselves in the future and have the understanding that they can choose. Because if you hide everything from your kid or from your partner, you start to create the secrecy life where things don't move forward. So I think being honest is the most important thing in any relationship. And that's my key message. Like, don't lie. Be honest. I understand every kid has their own level of information they can receive depending on their age of course it needs to be age appropriate but be honest with the ones you love love it love it um yeah i guess like my last question for you is now that you've written this book and you're about to you know it's about to be on sale and hopefully you'll get millions and millions of dollars in sales and it'll be in homes across the world but I'm curious, what, what's next for you? What, what kind of directions do you see taking your career in terms of you continuing to be a writer? Is this something that you want to maybe create like sexual health education content for young people? Do you foresee yourself continuing to work with your amazing illustrator? What's, what's like on the horizon for you? Uh, yeah, so right now uh, I'm writing two books, one young adult and one children's book. The topics are a little bit different. Uh, I think I really want to research more before I can talk to children about sex education or about mm-hmm. uh, I really would like to study psychology. There's something that it's in my horizon because I want to understand more about people and about the relations before I have the the autonomy to talk about those things. So. What I want to continue to do is write things for. Uh, what I want to continue to do is write books for kids with things I relate with, uh, and things that speak with me, even when I was a child or when or now. And I definitely want to continue work with my illustrator. Clara is a very dear friend of mine. We met when when we were seven years old in Brazil, and we've been friends ever since. Mm-hmm. And now we we met again to do a color named Love. That's why it was such a special project because I felt it was done in family <laughs> yeah. and and I for sure want to continue work with her we're looking now for publishers and literary agents we're looking for someone to work with to help us if we're not going to launch new books and kickstarter we still don't know but definitely writing is still in my present in my future and when I, what, what I want to continue doing because it was very, very satisfying to receive so many positive messages and to see that something I wrote is able to help someone tell their story. So this is what I want to continue doing. Incredible. Well, (laughs) I am rooting for you and I am so impressed with you and I can't wait to buy the book and purchase it for my niece and for other people in my life. And do you want to share with folks once it's out where they can where they can get it and where they can follow you on social media? Yeah. So our Instagram is at a caller named Love. We're gonna put everything there. Now, if you go to the Instagram page, there's a link to a pre-sale uh, list. So you just submit your email there. 
we're trying to see how many people we get in the pre-list. So we are able to combine everything from the Kickstarter with everyone from the pre-list and ship books together to you in end of March, April latest. So there's still a chance. You can put your name there. We're not going to forget you. And then after we launch the book, the link is going to still be the same on our Instagram, but then you're going to have the links for Amazon or for Ingram Sparks or for whatever we're going to sell the book at. But wait for some news. We're trying to translate the books in more languages. Ooh, some people exciting. are interested. So hopefully you're going to see this beautiful story in more languages than English. Wonderful. Well, thank you so, so much, M. Ellery, for being on today. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much, Danielle. Hope to talk to you soon in some foreseeable future if there is a new book or something going Love on. It. And I will be very, very glad to send your a caller named Love to you. Oh, <laughs> amazing. Thank you so much. Meet Pandia Health. By people with uteruses, for people with uteruses, and led by a doctor, Pandia Health makes your life easier by bringing birth control by mail. Pandia Health offers free and confidential delivery of the pill, so you don't have to go out of your way to get the health care you need. Skip the trip to the pharmacy. Go to PandiaHealth.com. That's P-A-N-D-I-A Health.com. And use code SEXEDFREE to get a free telemedicine appointment for the first 50 people who sign up. Offer only valid in Arizona, California, Florida, Texas, and Wyoming. Sex Ed with DB is supported by Clona Willie. Clona Willie has been all about dick since 96, and all kits are hand assembled in Portland, Oregon. All materials are 100% body safe, extremely high quality, and easy to use and clean. Use promo code SEXED20 for 20% off your purchase of any Clona Willie or Clona Pussy kit at www.clonawilly.com. Follow them on IG at clonawillykit. How many different ways do you think I can say the word lube in 30 seconds? Let's give it a shot. Lube. Lube. Luby, luby, luby. Lube. Lurb. L to the U to the B to the E. Lube. Well, that was lubes. I mean, loads of fun. This phenomenal and very necessary lube break was brought to you by Uber Lube. Use promo code SEXEDDB for 10% off your purchase with free shipping at www.uberlube.com. Our creator, co-producer, sound engineer, and host is me, Danielle Bezalel, aka DB. Our co-producer and communications lead is Catherine Cohen. Our main logo and banner graphic were created by Andrea Forgotch. Our social media intern is Leslie Lopez. Our music theme is by Hook Sounds. Our ad music is by my stepdad, Bill Gant. Thank you so much to our featured guests, partners, and our listeners. If you're interested in advertising with us, email us at sexedwithdb at gmail.com. For more sex ed content, follow us on Insta at sexedwithdbpodcast. Tune in next time. <laughs>